I've had very little personal experience with the Wonder Boy franchise. I know what it is, and I know what systems it was out on. Uh, I just, I only played one entry, and I played like less than an hour of it, and that was years and years ago. I couldn't even tell you which one it was, but that's it for me. So while I knew what Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap was from the development blogs and trailers and stuff like that, I, gameplay-wise, I was going in clean slate. I, I haven't experienced what the franchise has to offer, so... That made me excited because it was a it was a new experience for me. I know it's a remake, and I know there are plenty of people out there who have played the original game, but for me, it was uh, it was brand new. So following the dev blogs and the trailers and stuff like that, I was super excited because it looked like it was going to be a game right up my alley. And now that I've played the uh, the remake, I, I can tell you that I find it to be absolutely fantastic. I find it to be a really high high quality remake. And uh, it was just a blast to play. It's, it's exactly what I expected it to be. Uh, and it, it's obvious that the team behind it put a lot of hard work and effort into it. So as I said, this is a Metroidvania style game. So that means there's lots of exploration. You basically are plopped down in the game and you're free to go wherever you want. So you get to explore the landscapes and you know the different passageways and doors and towns and stuff like that and you'll happen upon plenty of things you won't be able to access. You'll see a door you can't get to, or you'll see a, a path that's uh, obstructed in some way, or you just can't access it. And you know that you'll be able to get to it later based on a power or a power-up that you get at some point. So the game is about exploring the landscape to find which ways you can go, and then eventually unlocking new powers to access the other areas that are blocked off. And uh, Wonder Boy does this in a, in a rather different and unique way, even compared to games today. Instead of having a character that continues to get abilities on top of abilities, you actually are uh, a monster, and each monster has a different type or two of abilities. So you'll start off as the dragon monster, and he can shoot fireballs. And you'll go to stuff like the, the mouse monster, which is... Uh, small and can fit into spaces the other characters can't and he can also walk on uh, walls and ceilings when there's certain type of blocks. There's a mermaid character that can move about underwater normally whereas other characters are slowed down by the water. Uh, stuff like that. Um, but the other twist is uh, for at least part of the game you are unable to switch between these monster types. So um, they, uh, boss fights happen I'll just say. They're boss fights and the boss fights unlock the new monster types. But when you change into the new monster, you're stuck with that type of monster until uh, you fight another boss and get another monster power, which will change you. Or later on in the game, you'll find platforms that you can jump on that will let you change between monster types. But there's a portion of the game where you can't do that. So it's kind of unique in the sense that you want to make sure you explore everywhere you can uh, when you are a certain monster type because you want to find everything that is available to you. And then later on, if you do miss stuff, you'll have opportunities to switch between types and, and go around and explore. But, uh, it, it, like I said, it's different than how uh, games are today as far as Metroidvania titles go. I haven't really experienced that. And uh, it was a lot of fun. It was, uh, it was interesting to really take note of the environments and really make sure you explore them to uh, your greatest ability to get all the goodies that are there before you move on. Because obviously, you want a, a, a stronger character to take on whatever challenges are ahead. So you take your time and explore, and I'm a big fan of Metroidvania games, so any more reason to explore is fine by me. Also, when you look at the Metroidvania games of today and compare it to Wonder Boy, uh, Wonder Boy is going to come off a little more rudimentary because, uh, you know, Metroidvania titles today have, like, so much stuff to collect and so many items to find, and there there is that stuff in this game, but it's not going to be on the same scale and scope of what you see today. Like, if you're going to compare it to, let's say, even Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which came out years ago, it's it's not going to be anywhere near that size and scope. And when you're going to shops to buy uh, items, you're not going to have, you know, 50 different things to choose from with all these different stat boosts and everything. There's just a very basic, like, here's a new shield, here's a new sword, here's a new piece of armor. There's like, I, I don't know, there's not a lot to pick from. Like, I, I think the 10 might, uh, I don't know if that's pushing it or not, but not there's not a ton to uh, choose, but it is important to get that stuff. You get your coins in-game to buy these items, and uh, you really do need them, because while the enemies aren't like anything crazy when it comes to attack patterns and stuff like that, when they do actually land attacks, they can really hurt, and this is especially true when you get uh, into further areas of the game. So, if you're going around and you're not bothering to buy new upgrades for your character, be it weapons or armor, you can get your ass handed to you in like maybe one or two hits. You'll, you'll be surprised how quickly your life will go down. So it's important to stay on top of this stuff. It's not really 
a shop that provides you with a lot of variety and choices and like, oh, I want to pick this or I want to pick that. It's pretty much like, okay, this is the next level armor. I need to get this. So those things are there for a reason. It's just important to note that, you know, the original game came out a million years ago. So um, the variety isn't going to be uh, on par with what you would expect from these games today. And that's not a knock. I just think it's, you know, putting your expectations in place. And when you are keeping your expectations in place, I think there's a couple features here for the remake that really do a good job of showing you how far things have come. Because on the fly, you can actually change the look and the sound of the game. So you can hit a button uh, while you're playing, and that button will uh, slide in the original look of the game or the original soundtrack slash sound effects. And you can mix and match those, so you can have the graphics of today with the soundtrack of the original, or the soundtrack of today with the graphics of the original, um, or both, you know, new or both old. And uh, it, it really is surprising to see just how much has changed visually and on the audio side when it comes to the remake. Uh, the visuals are outstanding in this game. It's all hand-drawn stuff, uh, hand-drawn backgrounds and hand-drawn animation for all the characters and enemies, and they did a fantastic job. It's absolutely gorgeous stuff. I feel like this is like movie quality animation. They really went above and beyond, and it really uh, shows that they put a lot of time and effort into making sure that the spirit of the original designs were at play when they remade this stuff, because you can compare the two and you can see where they got the uh, the designs for the new stuff. They certainly took some liberties in some of the areas, uh, but it's all for the better. Um, they really did it, such an excellent job. I, I, can't, I can't give them high enough praise for that aspect of the game. It's one of the most beautiful games I've seen. Um, and you know, they, they put effort in every area, uh, large and small, from the main characters to uh, the, the, you know, an enemy you see once or twice, so all of them have been given the same level of care. And backgrounds have gotten a major, major overhaul when compared to the fir to the original, because the backgrounds in the original were pretty much non-existent. They were, like, one color, and that was it. So if you swap back and forth now, you'll see, like, backgrounds now have trees and mountains and sunsets and, like, boats and all kinds of stuff, and you swap to the original and it's just, you know, a green background, and that's it. So they really expanded upon what the original game offered there, and as I was saying, the same goes for the audio. The soundtrack is absolutely wonderful. It's so well done. And again, the original tunes are definitely uh, the basis for what the uh, remakes are here. And the remakes are outstanding. They're, they're so much fun to listen to. They really capture the, uh, the feeling of the environment, which, which is something the original tunes couldn't really do. Because the, uh, the remake soundtrack is using all different types of instruments. And they, they definitely play with them in different ways and, and, do diff and twist the themes in certain ways to give them a feel or a vibe that fits the background. Um, and that is even more so when you talk about the boss or boss stage themes. Because in the original game, the boss stage theme was the same for every boss stage. But in this remake, they have taken that theme and given it a remake each time for a boss stage. So that remake will depend on the area that you're in. So there's like, you know, like a, I want to say like a, a pyramid or there's a, like a sunken ship. So they had those two uh, boss stages might have the same theme, but they're played in completely different way with completely different instruments and tempos and paces and uh, different touches throughout the way. So they sound like completely different songs. Uh, again, above and beyond with the visuals and the audio, and it's definitely one of the, the biggest highlights of the whole game. The actual gameplay itself is going to be very basic. I mean, there's jumping and there's attacking, and that's about it. You have some sub weapons you can pick from, like arrows and fireballs or stuff like that, but nothing crazy. Uh, it's very obvious that, you know, the, the gameplay it comes from many, many years ago. And uh, rather than really expand upon it, they just wanted to uh, keep the core of the gameplay uh, true to what the original was. So some people might take issue with that because they'll feel the uh, mechanics are very simple. And they are, without a doubt. But the thing is, they work, and they, they work well. So uh, I, I, I don't know. Uh, it's a tough thing to judge when you are someone in my position where you've been playing games for so long. And, you know, you've played a ton of games that have simple mechanics like that, and you I still appreciate them, and it's not looking at it with rose-tinted glasses. It's just saying, like, 
you know, I've experienced a lot of games like this, so I'm okay with this now. I, I don't need it to be expanded upon. And there's going to be other people who grew up in a different generation, like in the PlayStation or uh, N64 generation, and they might play this and be like, man, this is a little too simple for my tastes. And I, I can't fault that, you know. Uh, like I said, it's hard for me because I grew up with that stuff, so it doesn't bother me, but I could see some people taking issue with it and wishing that they expanded upon it a bit more for the remake, but then you have to look at it from the perspective of maybe expanding upon it would have broke uh, what the original managed to do, and then also for the fans of the original, they might be upset that the developer came in and twisted a whole bunch of things to try and make it more modern or more advanced where the fans feel like it doesn't need to be done. So, you know, it's a delicate thing to do, um, and they just decided to stick with what the game originally did and enhance the visuals and the audio, so. Not a knock, uh, not a good thing or bad thing, it's just that is what it is, so as long as that stuff doesn't bother you, you should be fine here, or if you're looking for something that, uh, if you're looking for a deep experience and a very intricate and uh, uh, sophisticated experience, this might not be the game for you. I think one of the things that really needs to be talked about is the uh, bonus menu that you get, and it's one of the best types of these things I've seen in any game. I know other games have done it, but I feel like in this game it's really important. So as you play, you will unlock things in this bonus menu that show you the creation of the game. So you'll get specific art for all the characters, you'll get uh, a look at the animatics, so you have different animation tests for ideas that made it into the final game and ideas that didn't and then you'll have like poster art and like just line sketches and stuff like that and you also get to see sheets uh, where they compare the sprite to the character that they went with in the final game you also get to see sheets where they went with a whole bunch of different character designs so you get to see how they were trying to update the character for uh, for this remake and they some of the characters have like five or six different styles before they settled on the one that is in the game and then on top of all, all of that, they have uh, recordings, video slash audio recordings of uh, their band playing all the music for the new game. So you get to see instrument by instrument all these people playing through the updated slash remakes of these uh, classic themes from the original game. And I love that kind of stuff, especially when the content that you get in the game is so fantastic. I love seeing it broken down piece by piece. I love getting an inside look at how the game came together. So I'm not usually one that's like keen on the, the like the gallery features in games, but I feel like this one, this type of game, especially because it's a remake, is uh, is it's a really welcome addition. It really uh, shows you how much hard work and effort they put into it, and how much they care for the original. Because like I said, you get to see where it came from, where they got to, and how they got to those moments. So the gallery, without a doubt, I feel is worth your time, worth looking through, and it's also. Uh, part of why you play through the game and try and find everything because the more things you find in the regular game the more things you uh, come across and explore the more stuff you'll unlock in the gallery so it gives you an incentive to really uh, explore the game's landscape to its fullest. Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap is made by people who absolutely love and respect the original game. They have a deep appreciation for what it did and they wanted to bring that to audiences today. So they've greatly overhauled the visuals and the audio. They really haven't touched much of the gameplay as far as mechanics and controls and stuff like that. So it's going to be interesting to see how people uh, approach this game, how they feel about this game, how they, how they end up uh, looking at it when they're all said and done. Fans of the original game, I feel like across the board, should absolutely love what was done here. I'd, I'd be very surprised if any of those fans had any major complaints, if any complaints at all. But uh, the gamers that are more focused on today's games, or our newer gamers, might not uh, enjoy what they get here. The, the, like I said, the game is very simple and straightforward in, uh, in that how it controls and what, what, what it asks you to do. And it's not like chock full of gameplay content. You can definitely beat the game uh, in one day, no problem. And that's not a knock. Uh, I've played plenty of games like that that are my favorite games ever. Um, just that I feel it's something worth pointing out. And the controls, uh, you know, it takes a little bit to get used to how characters control them. Uh, some players of today might find them to be, uh, I don't know, maybe not as tight of controls as you would expect. They got like a little bit of a slide to them, a little bit of uh, movement to them. Um, and, you know, that's part of the classic feel, and I feel like old school fans are going to dig that, and maybe today's gamers aren't going to dig that, and neither side is right or wrong, it just is what it is. All I can tell you is that 
all the elements of the game that I experienced and everything that I've played and my whole uh, journey through the game has been fantastic. I absolutely love the title. Uh, I think it is a 100% a love letter to the original. Uh, and I can really appreciate that because, like I said, it's so obvious that the team involved here loved the original game. And I think they've done a fantastic job in uh, updating that original experience. So if you've missed out on the original, uh, or the whole series for that matter, this is an excellent jumping point for it. And then you can go into things like the the Wii uh, Virtual Console or Wii U. I'm not sure if it's on there or not, but I know on some of the on the Virtual Console somewhere there are some of these games, so you can go check out those as well. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's like I said earlier, it's a top notch experience. I was really happy with it. I think it's another excellent addition to the Switch eShop. And if you're into uh, platformers or Metroidvania games, I'm sure you're going to dig this one too. Um, all I'm saying is keep your expectations in check. It's not a 50 hour game. It's not going to be the most advanced gameplay and it's not going to be, you know, the, the craziest uh, enemy patterns and stuff like that. It's a, it's a very uh, old school feeling game and uh, for me, I dig that. So as long as you know what you're getting into when you uh, pick it up, you should come out really, really impressed. Hey guys, RMC here from Go Nintendo. If you like what you saw in the video, why don't you give us a thumbs up and maybe even subscribe? We'd love to have you. If you want to see what else we're up to, you can check out GoNintendo.com for 24-hour Nintendo news. You can visit us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash GoNintendo. You can check us out on Twitter at Twitter.com slash GoNintendoTweet. And we're even over on Instagram at Instagram.com slash GoNintendo. I put all the links in the description just to make it easier for you guys to follow. Thanks a lot!